Crocodilians today are seen as quite a stable group evolutionarily, not having changed too much overall since the time of the dinosaurs. This statement though does have some issues, not just in how it often glosses over just how diverse the group is today, but also as to how different many of their relatives were in the past. There are a ton of these animals to discuss, so I'll be covering a ton more at a later date. Before the moment, I feel the need to discuss one of the most interesting of them all, being the fairly recently described Brachiosuchus, an animal that very nearly went under the radar. Described in 2021 from remains found in Sudan, the material collected from the area where they were found consisted of a nearly complete skull, along with some additional articulators and also scattered post-cranial remains that would be found to be pretty unusual for such an animal. The formation in which the fossils were found in was the companion through a strict teenage Cababish formation dating to around 83 through 66 million years ago, which comprises of a range of sand, silts, and mudstones that represent forms of lagoons and tidal flats and a rather understudied area that before this point had yet to show any signs of large vertebrate fossils. The remains were attributed to a group of animals known as the Dirosaurids, not to be confused with the very similar sounding Dryosaurids, a group consisting of generally small basal iguanodonts dinosaurs. Dirosaurids are crocodiliforms, but do fall outside the more specific living order of Crocodilia, instead essentially being cousins to this group, sitting outside of being included with them in the same order, but still being relatives, albeit comparatively distant. They appeared in the Lake Cretaceous and did manage to survive the end of the Mesozoic, with the marine dwelling animals being among the few marine reptile groups to survive the extinction event, though ultimately going extinct in the Eocene Epoch. Over a dozen taxa are currently known, and they range from being either terrestrial to even fully marine, with them being quite diverse in their overall proportions and therefore given niche. Their find in this region of Sudan was especially significant in that it represents one of the oldest known dinosaurids from Africa in general, and also globally, being one of the most basal known of the group known of. The nearly complete and partially articulated skeleton that represents an animal of an estimated 7 meters in length, which makes them among the largest members of their family. The remains were prepared and eventually housed at the Natural History Museum in Berlin, though said remains will eventually be returned to Sudan upon the eventual creation of a paleontological collection facility in the country. The specimen was named as Brachiosuchus cababishensis, with the genus name coming from brachio meaning arm in Greek and suchus meaning crocodile, with the species name being in reference to the formation where they were found. As stated earlier, as an estimated 6 or 7 metres in overall length, with the skull alone being a 4 metre, Brachiosuchus was quite a substantially sized animal, though this wasn't the only thing notable about them. Analysis of the postcranial remains when compared to other dinosaurs revealed that this animal had some super strange proportions not seen in frankly any similar animal, and truly makes them one of the most peculiar animals I've so far covered on the channel, with proportions as similarly baffling as other previously covered animals here on the channel like Xinjiang Tyson. Unlike any other known crocodilomorph, they're humerus, their upper arm bone, being 10cm longer at 58cm in length, compared to the femur which was 48cm long, and is otherwise quite normal for what's commonly seen in the group. These elongate forelimbs gives them quite a disproportionate appearance when reconstructed, with them also having other weird proportions like having quite a short torso, a rather squat tail from what's inferred from their close relatives, as well as a skull that has quite a proportionately long snout. Put together, all of these proportions paint a picture of quite a peculiar animal, and one where their specialised forelimbs clearly had an apparent function of some sort. It makes the most sense that with these forelimbs that Brachiosuchus was a predominantly aquatic animal, perhaps specialised to different kinds of prey than when compared to other dirosaurids. Longer forelimbs are generally longer and more aquatic reptiles like the extinct Pachypleurosaurs and Plesiosaurs, as well as the still living sea turtles though Brachiosuchus differs in lacking the paddle shape to their forelimbs like what these animals have. These large forelimbs would surely have helped Brachiosuchus manoeuvre through their aquatic habitats, with the forelimbs being of greater importance in proportion and overall locomotion, while the smaller hindlimbs were likely to have been effective stabilisers, though exactly how has yet to be tested, and it would be a good point of further research to carry out should anyone want to take it up. In terms of how they might have functioned on land, it is worth noting that while dinosaurs have quite light armour, that doesn't overlap nearly as much as is the case in living crocodiles, which in the case of swimming would have allowed them to have a more undulating swimming style, and also with terrestrial locomotion, they likely would not have been effective walkers. These less strongly connected osteodooms, while giving them greater flexibility, did however come with the cost of stability, 
with research of other dinosaurs similar to Brachiosuchus showing that the running and also high walking behaviours of living crocodiles cannot be carried out by large dinosaurs, instead being restricted to either smaller species or juveniles. This means that while Brachiosuchus could have come onto land and walked around a bit, they would not have been all that proficient at doing so. To conclude this video, I came across a while ago before making this video when Brachiosuchus was first described back in 2021, a post by Armin Rindel, an Austrian paleontology and crocodile enthusiast who I'd encourage you all to follow here if you want to learn some more cool things like what's been covered here. And he had this to say on Brachiosuchus and on paleontology reconstructions as a whole that I find both really fascinating and important. He notes that time and time again, scientists often underestimate the importance of paleoart, since without it, dinosaurs and all these other fascinating animals, many of which I've covered here on the channel, would not exist without the medium of paleoart. Without it, we have nothing to go off of in visualising them except for their bones and the words and tables on the pages of scientific papers. The art is what we as a population really take away from the science, with said art bringing these animals back to life in ways that the most vivid descriptions cannot something which a good few papers haven't taken into account, including the one describing Brachiosuchus. With a lack of illustration accompanying their description, it made it harder for people to grasp and visualise them, even among those who are well versed in and well amongst the paleontology sphere. Brachiosuchus was known to be a weirdly proportioned animal from those that did read the paper, though the complete absence of any skeletals or life reconstructions meant it flew under people's radars for a while until people like Armin and others took it upon themselves to bring attention to Brachiosuchus and how unique they actually were, which was a really admirable thing and provided a good amount of great discussion. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.